you slide the mini stem down and anterior beneath the fibular head, identify the point at which the muscle twitch occurs and the movement changes from eversion to dorsiflexion. This is the point at which the common perineal nerve bifurcates and the stimulation shifts from affecting the superficial branch to the deep branch. Watch and feel for any slight twitch of the tibialis anterior muscle. Once the twitch is discovered, stop sliding the mini stem and slowly increase the intensity to confirm the appropriate response. Pure dorsiflexion isn't always achievable and may not be essential for toe clearance in all cases. A functional foot lift may be a balance of eversion and dorsiflexion. Very slight shifting of the mini stem along the nerve pathway will allow you to identify the spot that produces the optimal movement. When you find this sweet spot, mark the location of the posterior black base node on the leg. This is the starting point for the placement of the posterior electrode. You can track the deep perineal nerve pathway by moving the mini stem anteriorly. Watch for dorsiflexion as you move slowly. You may need to increase the intensity to drive the stimulation through the muscle to the deep nerve. Identifying and marking this pathway will outline where you can move the electrodes to facilitate dorsiflexion. Select the appropriate electrode option for your patient. The one and a quarter inch premium blue gel electrodes are most effective for specific nerve motor point stimulation. They are the recommended option for children, small adults, or anyone who gets the most effective and comfortable stimulation from an electrode covering a small specific surface area. The large 1.875 inch premium blue gel electrodes stimulate a broader surface area and make it easier to generate a response. They may also improve reproducibility considering the electrodes don't need to be as specifically positioned to produce the desired foot lift. Keep in mind though, a large electrode covering a greater skin surface stimulates more fiber simultaneously with every step. Use caution when selecting these electrodes for patients with fatigue issues or if a patient complains of increased adverse sensation when using them. The higher water content in both sizes of premium blue gel electrodes promotes a safe and effective stimulation and may be gentler on the skin. Alternative electrode options are still available for patients who have done well with them in the past. Make sure the walk aid is turned off and attach the electrode lead cable to the back of the walk aid. Running the cable to the right for a right leg and to the left for a left leg. This allows plenty of cable length to attach the electrodes and also prevents excessive bending or flexing of the electrode lead cable. Attach the walk aid to the cuff on the anteromedial flattened area. Before placing the electrodes on the leg, it is important to size the cuff to fit the patient. Identify the appropriate cuff size and make adjustments to the black strap as needed to ensure a snug fit when the cuff is buckled. Position the cuff around the mid-calf region and secure in place below the potential electrode sites. This places the walk aid in a convenient location to hook up the electrodes and freeze your hands to adjust the electrode placement. Connect the electrodes to the walk aid electrode lead wires. Make sure the black lead, negative, is connected to the back electrode and the red lead, positive, is connected to the front electrode. Black to the back, red ahead. Moisten the electrodes with water. Place the back electrode connected to the black lead wire over the mark identified during the mini stim testing procedure. This is the active electrode that will stimulate the motor point of the nerve. Position the front electrode connected to the red lead wire on the upper third of the tibialis anterior muscle belly. This is the inactive electrode that pulls the stimulation back out of the body to complete the circuit. Turn the walk aid on by turning the blue intensity knob in a clockwise direction to the one position. An audible beep will sound and a green light will flash intermittently to indicate that the unit is on. Always start at a low level of intensity and gradually increase during the testing procedure. Use the lowest intensity possible to get the desired response. Mimic the cuff with your hand. While maintaining total contact over the electrodes with one hand, 
Press the stim button and observe the foot movement. The stimulation remains active for as long as you depress the button. Adjust electrode location to achieve optimal dorsiflexion as necessary. If no movement occurs with stimulation, reposition the back electrode to find the motor point. Moving the electrode inferior and or anterior should elicit more dorsiflexion. Moving the electrode superior and or posterior should elicit more eversion. Keep in mind that although anatomy is fairly specific, each body is unique. You may need to think outside the box. For example, the motor point that produces a functional foot lift may lie in the popliteal fossa near the lateral hamstring insertion, right along the posterior fibular head, or anteriorly within the tibialis anterior muscle belly. Another way to affect the response to stimulation is to move the front electrode farther away from the back electrode. Separating the two electrodes drives the stimulation deeper towards the deep perineal nerve. This will encourage dorsiflexion. Moving the electrodes closer together produces a more shallow stimulation, potentially stimulating the superficial perineal nerve. This will encourage eversion. Know why you are moving each electrode and move them in a direction with purpose. Once you have identified the optimal electrode placement, apply the cuff over the electrodes. Be careful not to touch the cuff to the electrodes inadvertently, as the Velcro on the electrodes will attach to the cuff and may pull the electrodes away from the skin. Align the orange tibial crest marker on the cuff with the tibial crest. Slowly wrap the cuff laterally to capture the electrodes. While holding the cuff securely in place with one hand, fasten the buckle closure. There should be no gapping between the cuff and the leg. The cuff should fit snugly and comfortably to promote complete contact between the electrodes and the skin. If necessary, use a pinch pad to prevent discomfort where the edges of the cuff meet posteriorly. Retest the electrode placement by pushing the stim button to assure the optimal functional foot lift. If the response is lacking, make sure the cuff fits snugly. Readjust the cuff or reposition the electrodes as needed. Retest after each change to assure the appropriate response. At this point, the patient is ready for data collection and programming. Here are some recommendations for electrode placement. Remember that comfort and function are dependent on the electrode placement and net charge. We will discuss net charge more during the data collection and programming segment. Always use the lowest intensity possible to get the desired response. This will enhance comfort by managing the net charge. A strong or odd sensation is okay. Pain, stinging, stabbing, etc. are not. Make sure that the skin is clean and that the electrodes are wet. This affects comfort and function. Always begin by identifying the starting point for the black electrode. Adjust the spacing between the black and red electrodes or their positioning to achieve the desired foot lift. If the contraction is not optimal initially, consider using the exercise mode prior to final placement of the electrodes to wake up the neural pathways. Make small movements when shifting the electrodes to determine final electrode placements in order to detect subtle changes in muscle contraction or function. Leave the electrodes on the skin until final placement is identified to prevent dissipation of the water and to maximize user comfort. If the electrodes lose contact with the skin, re-wet and reapply. Evaluate functional foot movement during sitting and standing before asking the person to walk, assuring a safe and effective foot lift for walking. Responses can differ with changes in patient position due to movement of the perineal nerve. Position the patient and their leg the same way each time to ensure consistency and to simplify your efforts. A leg position in extension with the knee slightly flexed mimics the position of the limb at terminal stance when the stimulation will be initiated.